Lady, uh, it is time for new products. Do this thing. It's new product time. All right. You ready to do this? Yeah. Go, 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 go. What's this? Okay, we're starting off with the C4 Labs uh, Metro Mini sh case. It's just an adorable little case, and so I thought this would be, like, we don't have an enclosure for the Metro Mini, so I thought this would be a nice one to have. It has multiple layers, and you can kind of configure it and, like, remove and add layers as necessary. And I just thought, like, okay, this is kind of an interesting little case that you can make a little protector. Um, it's not expensive, so I thought we'd carry this in the store. Okay. Can you show it on the overhead? Yeah, I'm going to show it on the overhead. It's overhead. Yeah. Do you want to... Um, Oh, I can zoom in. Yeah, yeah so that. it's multiple layers of acrylic. There's clear and black, and they're like layered. It's kind of it's called zebra because it's black and white layers. And then the pins come out, so you can still stick in a breadboard. And you have a little bit of space inside, so you can like probably stick a little breakout board or some LEDs or a little NeoPixel strip or whatever. And then um, there's slots, so you could have the header pins come up like with stacking headers. And then there's like the micro USB connector. It's just a little case, very easy to put together, just like four yeah. screws. You just stack it together and attach it. All right. Next up, another case. This is really cool. So I kind of promised myself not to carry any more Raspberry Pi cases because there's like there's bazillions of Raspberry Pi cases. We've but talked this one, about this. This one is really cool looking. Yeah, and so, this is for Labs. We decided on this one because we're like, you know what? Like, this is just really cute. Like one more. This is the one. It's got the live hinge. Yeah. It's it's made out of wood. We got a special Smells great. place in our cold dark hearts that uh, for laser cut wood. It's just, laser, it's really it, nice. And this is just really great wood, and it's like. Engraved. I don't even know exactly how he does. I mean, like, yeah, yeah it's just super cool. awesome. It's like a really that. beautiful design. So we decided to carry it. Okay, show it on the overhead. Just may as well. So let me zoom out. You know it's good when it looks good on the overhead. Yeah, yeah so you get this like cute little. Ra it's not the Raspberry Pi logo. Just some raspberries. It's nice. Thank you for not using the logo. It's yeah. got like labels for everything. You can see the LEDs. It's got this kind of like funky car hood ornament look to it. Um, on the bottom, it has C4 labs. Yeah. Okay. And you can have a GPIO come out. It's, and it's interesting because it's not, most cases, it's like the front is this, but they actually did it so it's from the side. It's actually kind of a good idea. So yeah. the back, it's like, it, it, it's, it's oriented a little bit better. Yeah. One of the things I really like about um, Raspberry Pi cases is the creativity that has gone into them. Like, there's a menagerie of Raspberry Pi cases. Menagerie? A menagerie of Raspberry Pi cases out there that people have um, really done amazing stuff. I don't I don't think... It's got little legs. I mean, like, yeah. this is really cute. I so I care. I don't think that when you design something like the Raspberry Pi, you could ever imagine what people might do with it. That's why it's... I, I actually like little dev boards that have an entire ecosystem around, like, Arduino or Raspberry Pi. And a successful one, like there's probably, I would say at least 200 different cases that you can get for Raspberry Pi. Oh yeah, easily. Right, like, 100, at least 200, 200 yeah, yeah. different ones. I'm well, not talking every, about different colors. I'm just talking about different cases. Oh, there's the, yeah, there's like tons yeah. of there's ton, we can't carry them all. We yeah. get we get questions every single day about carrying case. Yeah. I so, really try to not carry that many. So it's just it's it's another like good example of the good job the Pi Foundation did with what, what, what and how they release something. Yeah. Because you could try to own it all, and you could have from the start said, this is the only case, this is the only thing. We have to, we have to move on. I know, I'm just saying, <laughs> you could have, it's, it's a neat little bit of history, because I don't think we're going to see stuff like this okay. forever. You're telling me to watch the new products, so. Um... You're at 847, you're doing okay. good. Okay, so um, this one is a coming soon. Um, this is a Raspberry Pi screen. And um, it's not out yet. It's not out yet. We don't even have one to demo. We didn't. We heard about it yeah. when, when you guys heard about it. However, we can. Um, I do have some other stuff that's kind of related and interesting. So I thought I'd show it off. Well, yeah. I was just gonna ask you one question yeah. with this. Like, what's the big deal with this? Is it because there's a different type of way it drives the display? It, yeah, it drives it through the DSI port. So it's not the HDMI connector. It's a, it's a different connector. So you can have an HDMI screen and a DSI screen. Also, it has um, capacitive touch capabilities, and it's like seven inch screen. So it's a, it's a nice display. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that'll be coming in the store soon. Mm -hmm. And then um, you had some stuff you wanted to show. Yeah, I don't actually have a, a screen, but I have something similar so I could like talk about the design of, yeah. of how they did and it. Yeah, you ran and got a chip or something, right? Yeah, I, I did. Can you go to the red? Yeah. So um, the first thing is, this is a 5-inch screen. This is a 5-inch screen with a capacitive overlay. So this is kind of what they've got, but a 7-inch version. So um, 800 by 480 displays tend to use TTL. 
So there's like a 50 pin connector here, 40 pin connector. And there's actually like eight pins for red, eight pins for green, eight pins for blue, and then like one clock pin. And this is how you talk to these displays. So it's not actually talking to, the, the Pi screen isn't talking to the display using um, uh, DSI RAW. It's actually using a converter. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. And secondly, there's a different flex circuit here, and that's for the capacitive overlay. So that's actually a completely different circuit. So like this, this um, board has you know uh, a five-inch screen that's the underneath, and then layered on top of it is this glass that actually does the capacitive touch. And then what's interesting is actually a, a couple um, weeks ago or like two or three months ago, I actually was thinking like, well, like if I wanted to drive a circuit using a DSI and, and I wanted to drive one of these types of displays, a TTL display with DSI, I need to get a little chip. So I actually picked up some of these Toshiba chips. You can barely see them, but they're BGA. Wow. So I was actually going to make a breakout for these because I was like, well, like I, I figured well. eventually there would be some documentation for the DSI port. Um, I'd want to have a, a breakout that would be able to like drive any kind of display, not just like the Pi screen. Um, people who want like they have like a smaller display or a larger yeah. display or whatever they want to just have TTL output. Uh, and this is the TC35877 XBG. So that's from Toshiba. And yeah, this is this is just like a a pretty fine pitch BGA. I mean like it's not the worst design because you can I think all the middle pins are all grounds and then you can get to some of these other pins. But basically there's 40 pads are 40 plus pads are to the TTL control and then there's probably another like six or seven control pads for the TTL. And then it has to have the DSI inputs, which is also like six or seven pins. So that's how they crammed that many connections into a little chip. So yeah, it's a little BGA. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I have, I have 10 of these chips. Okay. They're cool. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll be able to design a breakout. All right. Pick it, plug and place it. But that's basically how the design works. It, 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 it uses a chip like that, maybe even the same chip, to convert the DSI signal into a 40 pin TTL. And then that's why there's a hat. That's the, there's a little chip, and then there's like you see a 40 pin connector, and then the display wraps around. Okay, so that's why it's a big deal. All right, and then tonight, the star of the show, besides you, is the single sensor. This is cool. It's a little silicon mic. I'm actually going to yeah. be using this for a different project, but while I was working with this project, uh, this chip, I was like, well, you know what? I should make a breakout for it. Um, because it, basically I want to make a very low cost microphone. It doesn't have an amplifier in it. Um, it's a silicon mic and it's um, a MEMS mic. So instead of having an electric microphone and then amplifier, it's all done on silicon. Doesn't mean you should like get it wet or anything, but it, you know, it has a little port and it works very well as a microphone, but um, it's, it's completely solid state. So um, I have a demo of it, but okay. it's pretty easy to use with something like an Arduino. Um, you would have, I have to go over here. You um, power it with you know three to five volts, and then uh, you get ground, and then the analog output goes to an analog pin on like your Arduino, and then you basically can detect audio. So you can you know, if I speak really close, it can hear me. Um, and this is just a little script that looks for a little sketch on the Arduino that looks at the analog pin and then graphs the maximum value. So basically, it's you know, audio input. What's nice about these is it's extremely thin and small. Um, if you don't want a bulky electric mic, this is the smallest microphone you can get. Okay. All right. And what's that, Lady Ada? Is new products. See right on time. You're all you're all worried about it. No, look, I just want to make sure you're we're all time. Right. So that's new products. 